Welcome to the Sun Parlor Coffee House Sessions. I'm Jan Hall from Folk Roots Radio. Christine Campbell launched her new album, Roller Coaster, in March this year. It's a true representation of her diverse influences, from hard rock and 70s rock to roots and blues and pop. Now, since her first self-titled solo project in 2013, Christine has gained a devoted following, with the attention earning her opening spots for Bob Seger, Steve Earle, Foreigners Lou Graham, and Jan Arden. She's our special guest in the studio, joined by her partner in crime, Blake Johnston, and she's coming up right now. Enjoy.
professor My heart beats getting faster Everything's a clasher in my life Won't you step on in? Boy, in peace of mind Try to leave you behind But you keep on trying Baby, you'll never win Quiet place far from town Raising kids by a hound In a bad and now it all gets old In this quest But my soul won't let me rest If I sit too long I must confess I might explode This is the mushiest one from my new album, Roller Coaster, with a little extra intro that I wrote a while back that I only play at some live shows. It's called Take Me Back. Sad, I'm strong, and 
That's Christine Campbell live in the Quantum Sound Productions studio in Kingsville for the Sun Parlor Coffee House Sessions. She's joined by her partner in crime, Blake Johnston. It's great to have you guys join us today. It's fun to be here. Now, I have so many questions, but I have to start with what I think is the most interesting one. And the fact that you actually started out as a pianist and working really hard on your piano before you actually got into guitar. And I have to ask, how did you get into music? Tell us a little bit about the, the story. Well, piano, my mom put me in and she put me in little festivals and I'd always win and get like first and second and everything like that. Um, but it was never really what I wanted to do. In fact, I didn't really like it at all. I had been in violin for a few years too, didn't care for that. And guitar, I would play air guitar, run around the house all the time. And I, that was what I always wanted to do. I always dreamt about playing electric guitar. And so, Eventually, I just started teaching myself because it didn't seem like it was going to happen. So I had my piano background. My mom had raised my allowance enough for me to stay in it. 
And later on in life, um, I had just realized that I was really lucky to be able to play piano. I, it just, it was like suddenly a light bulb just turned on and I was just like, this is awesome. I actually play piano too. I don't love it as much as guitar. Guitar is my absolute favorite thing to do. But um, I just, it was just another part of the musical aspect. It's another way to look at writing music. So with guitar, I kind of taught myself different scales kind of um, were where it was at for learning solos and just playing off the cuff. And piano was like reading music and I did theory to go along with it and learning it perfectly and studying it. Every single note had to be a certain way. And then eventually I kind of was able to cross over the theory a little bit towards the guitar side and going off the cuff with piano. So it's kind of like a mashup, like none of it's the proper way to go, but I think it's kind of good to have a little bit of everything. And it's actually pretty, pretty nice that as in the session that you've done for us today, you know, we have those guitar songs and then you can step over and, and play the piano as well. I'd certainly, I think from a, a performance point of view, it's like, wow. The guitar, though, is the, the thing that really gets me because were you a natural from the time you first picked it up? Because it certainly comes across like the, this is, you know, when you pick up that guitar to play, it's like part of your body. I mean, the, the connection is 100%. So um, did you realize early on that you really had a talent for it? Well, I think people kind of dismiss sometimes the work that does go into it. And I do love that people think I'm a natural or something. But uh, I mean, I think we all, I always say it's like a video game like profile. You get like your acceleration and all your different speeds and everybody has a little bit more of each thing. But at the end of the day, like you have to work really hard. And even if you're really good, you have to work extra hard just to get that little bit extra good. You know what I mean? So something has to kind of keep you going. With guitar, I can say that it's what I love the absolute most. Whenever I'm having kind of a, a tough day or anything's going on in my life, I've always felt like playing guitar just puts me in a really peaceful place. So it's the one that feels the most natural and brings me the most joy. So you made your first album in 2013. That's the, the self-titled album. Well, it was oh. technically like my third album. Oh, that was actually your third? Yes. Okay. But I had a couple, well, an EP and a full-length album with my band Stone Mary. Okay. Which was a hard rock band. So this was your first solo album. I right. Think. And okay. when I had done it, it was supposed to be like kind of an acoustic breakaway from what was going to be my next album with Stone Mary, which is going to be kind of hard rock. So I even kind of um, toned it down even more. So just kind of extra songs I, I didn't find a place in the band for. So I thought I would put them on an album, but then the band disbanded and <laughs> I was left with that. And that's what people kind of ended up knowing me more for. Yeah. And so did you find that, was that a hard transition to be part of a band and then you know, getting out there under your your own name and, you know, we'll obviously play with people like Blake. Yeah, I could talk all day about that kind of stuff because like even Stone Mary, I just didn't even really want them to know my name. <laughs> so I just, people always thought my name was Mary and I was totally cool with that. With Christine Campbell, it's only me on the stage. If I screw up, it's just me. They know my name. <laughs> and like if I hit a note and hit puberty on the way there, it's like, it's so known. There's no distortion on the electric guitar to, to drown it out. So it was petrifying going solo. But uh, I'm trying to slowly build the layers back up. And I, cause I still, I love electric guitar and I feel like that only has a place in a full band. So as much as I still love acoustic and I don't ever want to lose that, I always want to be able to do acoustic shows and have that side of it. I still want to be able to pursue the electric side as well and keep building up towards that. So tell us about the, the new album. That's Roller Coaster. Um, the Last Man Standing song, I think, has done tremendously well. Um, it's been charted, I think, on the East Coast Countdown. Um, tell us a little bit about the songwriting that went into that album. Well, it was four different studios, three producers. Blake was one of them. He did actually most of the production. He did a lot of the guitar. How was I to work with Blake? Was I really easy? A dream. I thought <laughs> so. Um, I worked with a hip hop producer, Classified, so. And how was that? I, I was pretty impressed to, to find out that Classified he was, was working on the album with you. Super cool. And uh, a lot of times I go in there and it was just not what I would normally expect out of a producer. Like it's such a different world, hip hop and rock. Like it's more about the bass rather than the guitar. And you can like sample a lot, right? So you, I normally am used to taking a bunch of takes to like get like just the right one. And we used a lot of the ghost tracks pretty much for the songs. So totally different from Blake. Blake was totally different from Brian. All three of them were completely different. And then we had another guy that kind of helped us out at, uh, in Windsor actually, Marty Back, who was great. And he mixed it and he also kind of just gave us two cents on a lot of stuff, which was totally different yet again. So it was nice because I'm just a very, 
I'm a scatterbrain, but I feel like it all comes together at the end if you just kind of keep pushing on and working with as many people as possible to see who you connect with the best. Do you feel like you've discovered your sound as a solo performer through this last album? I feel like I've chiseled the rock closer to the art that I'm trying to get to, and I'm really happy with my album. So what does the future bring? What are you expecting to happen? Um, that's a big question. Yeah. Um, pretty much, I just measure myself to the couple of months prior and hope that I'm a little bit further ahead. That I've grown in some way, whether I'm a way better guitar player or if I've found something different with my voice or I have a new project and I feel like my next album's gonna be a bit better or my band has expanded or I've just done something to grow. Like, it's just, it's always, I want to hear people always just say, this was better than your, the last time I saw you or, or you've just come a certain ways. And I, I don't like, comparing myself to other people. It's really just that I want my to grow as a business. I'm still gonna take risks and try to go write the hit out in Nashville the odd time, but I'm not gonna bet my life on it. And it's not about getting hugely rich and famous. It's about building my business of music because I'm doing it till the day I die no matter what. No, so. that, well, that's a, that's a, um, a great goal to, to make sure. And it comes through. We had a chance to, to watch you play live a few days ago and that certainly came through. So somebody who to survive you know, enough really, with people really that appreciate connected, you yeah. and the sounds and the um, instrumentation that you want to be able to work with and be able to play and not to go bankrupt, not to get caught up with the business side so much. So that's what I guess I'm trying to strive for more than anything right now is to kind of hopefully pull away from the business side a little bit more, which is starting to happen as I build a bit of a team, but and just go towards the creative side. There's so many creative things you can do when uh, we have global portals at our fingertips and ways to interact with people. That's kind of a, a huge and amazing thing that's happening these days. We're talking about that. How? What is the best way for people to learn more about your music? Website, christinecampbellmusic.com. That's great. And Blake, how can people learn more about you? Um, <laughs> Go to <laughs> Christine Campbell. To. <laughs> yeah, sure, what she said. Um, I'm on Facebook. If you look up Blake Johnson, I obviously have a music fan page. Um, and, um, and I'm on Instagram. Blake T. Johnson, I think there's a dot in there somewhere. Yeah. You'll see me curly hair, you can't miss me. Yeah. Um, here's a playing guitar, funny look on my face. And uh, that's about it. The Instagram page is more or less just, you know, musings from a, <laughs> it's, you're not gonna find anything with the music on there necessarily, but the Facebook page will be where to go. It's been great to have you join us today. Christine Campbell with Blake Johnston in the Quantum Sound Production Studio in Kingsville for the Sun Parlor Coffee House Sessions. We still have one more song to come. This next song is one that Blake and I wrote together. It's one of my personal favorites, and it's called Exit Out.
good day. Always said it like it was now. Just never said it. Hey, lonely heart. We meet again. Funny how we look so long, so hard for love in a day. Session go today, like, well, the songs are okay, but they tuned for like 20 minutes in between songs. <laughs>